This is a rock tumbler. It turns rough, dull rocks into smooth, shiny rocks. And today I'm gonna to build a new one from scratch. This was a gift for my kids. And surprisingly, the whole family really got into it. It was fun, hands-on. The kids were learning about delayed gratification. It was a good little tool, until it wasn't. Now, it might as well be a rock. Pretty useless. Now I could just buy a new one and move on, and honestly, that's probably the smart move. But when something breaks, I don't think our first instinct should be to just toss things out. Fixing things and figuring things out, that should be our default. And I kinda like my kids to see that. So I've been designing and fabricating for over 20 years now, and I know that I can't beat the big manufacturers on price. But the goal here is actually to teach my kids a valuable lesson. So how much is that lesson worth? Let's find out. So let's crack this thing open and see what we can learn. Sorry, I, sorry, I don't actually need this. It's, actually, maybe I do. Now, rock tumblers aren't that complicated. It's basically just a motor spinning a drum. So the basic idea was to have two uprights with shafts that span across them. These could function both as a way to hold everything together, as well as a way to orient some kind of roller system to allow for the drum to spin freely. First thing on the list was a motor, and it had occurred to me that maybe a corded drill motor just might do the trick. It's strong, has variable speed, and is already wired for 110, so it's basically plug and play. So I went cordless a long time ago, and I haven't looked back, which meant that I didn't actually have a corded drill laying around the shop, so I had to go out and get one. This thing set me back about $17 when all was said and done, but it should have plenty of torque, it's got a variable switch, and it's already wired for power. Okay, so how many of you saw this coming? Because, you know, honestly, I've never taken a drill apart. I assumed the motor was geared, but not like this. I mean, they, it's literally molded into place. So the alignment of all the gears is built into the body of the drill. Also the same with the brushes. I was expecting this to sort of be one unit and maybe something I could pull out and then just make a housing for it so it could just bolt into place. If I wanted to use this, I would literally have to model something that kept all of this alignment in place. Um, or I would just have to find a way to, to integrate the whole drill into my design. And neither of those are directions I want to go. This is one of those things I've gotten better at over time. I really thought that drill was gonna work and I was patting myself on the back, thinking about how much time and money I was gonna save myself. And I was wrong. And so it's time to move on. It's a sunk cost and that sucks, but I also am reminded that sometimes hunches pay off and sometimes they don't. And that's why it's always a good idea to have a plan B. So, on to plan B. With the drill no longer an option, I just ordered a motor with the RPM range that I needed, and that would be easy to mount and would be plenty strong. I also got some skateboard wheels because I figured they'd be worth trying out, and even if they don't work, the bearings will still come in handy. First things first, before I went too far, I needed to test the motor and make sure it worked. I've definitely made that mistake before. I figured that I would 3D print the main body of the tumbler and just use some all thread to hold it all together, but printing takes time, so I just grabbed a few scraps of wood and drilled some holes to knock out a quick prototype. I like it when you can do these quick and dirty tests that let you know if you're on the right path. I figure you can work out the mechanics first, you can always make it look cool later. And here's where I realized my next mistake. I thought we would just repurpose this drum since other than being a bear to open, it works just fine. The problem is that it's not actually a cylinder, it's wider on one end than the other, and it means it's going to lean to one side unless I redesign it to offset the rollers. Or we could order a new drum that is easier to open and is the same diameter on both sides. This was a change that I should have anticipated anyways. Most of the rock tumblers that I was looking at for inspiration all had these kinds of straight drums. You know, it just, 
it just never gets old. It's like that satisfying rush when something you make actually works. It's, you know, we need our own word for it because it's like, I don't know, it's super gratifying. It's like, it's, grati it's gr like gratification. I'm very gratifabricated. Now that we had a good proof of concept, I could design a more permanent solution. And since I had the exact alignment from our prototype, I could just model that to match. Also, now that I knew what motor I was going to be using, I could model up some pulleys so that I could transfer power from the motor to the rollers. I'm just such a big fan of 3D modeling. I love being able to visualize what I'm making and do it in the computer where the mistakes just don't cost that much. It also helps me to see how things come together, which is exactly how I knew that I was going to need a bunch more parts. I did buy a rheostat thinking that it would be good to be able to vary the speed of the motor, but that turned out to not work very well, so I just had to rummage through my old stuff and I actually found a switch that I think is going to work great. Why is this so slow? Hmm. Did you remember to calculate the ratio change between the roller and the drum? Uh, I forgot to calculate the ratio change from the roller to the drum. Hey, we all make mistakes. You're still good at math. Well, here it is. There's absolutely some things I want to fiddle with. The pulley ratios being primary among them, but it's done and it works. So the question is, was it worth it? And the answer, I don't really know yet. See, there was no lectures. I didn't ask them if they understood why I did what I did. I just gave them the rock tumbler, and they were happy. And truthfully, that's enough for now. Now, looking at the numbers, it would have been infinitely cheaper to just buy a new one. And there probably would be some value in that too. But I wasn't actually making a rock tumbler. I was building an opportunity to connect with my kids, to try to be a good dad for a minute. And I hope they'll remember that. I think that for an idea to stick, it needs to be memorable. And I think this qualifies. Hopefully somewhere in the back of their brains, a little stone has been placed, dull and unassuming. And over time, as that idea gets rolled over and over and over again, it'll become smooth and shiny and clear. And maybe, just maybe, the next time something breaks, my kids will ask, hey dad, can we fix this? I'm not sure how many of you are in the market for a rock tumbler these days, but I'll be sure to link all the parts that I used as well as all the build files, and I'll put those down in the description. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.